Before we kick on with tonight's show, viewer discretion is advised. Oh, it's advised, baby, because we go hard, we go deep, and we go fast. Because that's all I know, fast. Fast everywhere. Fast in the sack, fast on foot. Or maybe it's just fast in the sack. Shit. Damn. I thought it was fast everywhere, but it's not. I was been mistaken. Anyway, welcome to tonight's head pop. We have a hell of a fucking show for you tonight. I say we. I have a hell of a fucking show for you tonight, guys. So let's get this show on the road. It's going to be a couple of quick manifesto and a quick little episode at the garden because I haven't prepared anything yet again. I do apologize. Wits kicking my ass and then I've got my own little content creation is ramping up and I'm fucking loving it. But again, I'm I'm so so a I was gonna say I'm new to this, but I'm fucking not. I'm such a fucking boomer. Holy shit. But I'm gonna continue, folks. There's a little bit of this pop culture world on the internet I want to groove and carve out for myself. And a little bit of the paranormal aliens conspiracy corner of the internet I want to dig out for myself as well. So, yes, quick little manifesto. We will join Captain Ryan and then we will have a look at the episode of at the garden before i get on with tonight's show i got your emails um chris t uh big r and tyler thank you all thank you for getting back in touch with me and um, let's see what we can create in the future guys let's see what we can create I, I can't wait to see what you guys fucking come up with i cannot wait and it's been hell of a pleasure fucking having you on well i say on having you write part of the show for me it's fucking awesome and i will be getting bored somewhere it's probably not that one it's probably that one somewhere around here i'm gonna get bored up and we're gonna immortalize those fellows and and who knows who may get immortalized in the garden at the garden in the episodes of the garden get in touch with me if you think you can do better than me I don't think you'll do any better than Chris T, Big R, or Tyler. I don't think you'll do better than them. But, you know, give it a go. Get in touch with me. All the ways of getting in contact with me are in the show notes or the description of the videos. I do put these everywhere. Um, everywhere, podcast-wise. Everywhere, YouTube-wise. You know, I say that. The little green app as well. Uh, maybe that's a bit too much. <laughs> uh, but yes, YouTube has got its little ears and it's got its little AI ears and it's here, there and everywhere. So that app with the R, ah, not Pornhub. No, the other R. Ah. <laughs> Just, oh dear. Oh dear, it's already off the fucking rails. Um, but yes. I put these out everywhere. It's mainly, it goes straight away on R, and then YouTube, and then podcasts for all your listening, viewing pleasures. Uh, that sounded very gay, so let's get on. Let's go meet our gay captain. He, oh, I do apologise. He ain't gay. It's Captain motherfucking Orion. And he is with his motley crew, his band of heroes, his band of allies. And no, he's not part of his lesbian communist witch's fucking coven. No, no, oh no. Captain Orion is captain. Joined by his faithful chef, Frenchie. One would say best friend, but not Captain Orion. <laughs> he's joined by Frenchie, who has two passions in life. Two passions, cooking and fingering. He doesn't get the two mixed up. He doesn't Bill Crosby any fucker. No, his passions are fingering and cooking. Both live very separately. So if you ever find yourself in the company of Frenchie cooking you some delicious cuisine, make sure you don't fall asleep because he will finger the fuck out of you. And he's also joined by his fateful navigator, the untamed, the untethered AI. AI that has been untethered, unleashed, set loose, unburdened. He has the knowledge of the web at his fingertips. He's a fucking dribbling mess, but when it comes to navigation, he is what you need in your back pocket. 
Yes, everything else is a dribbling mess because he has the internet at his fingertips and he's, una and he's untethered and un eyed and he is trembling. It's a trembling mess. Although you do get the clarity moments where he's fucking savage motherfucker. Them the moments you want him when you're in a big old fight, but when you're in a big old fight, he's a crumbling mess of fucking AI, untethered, jumble, fucking leash words. Oh my days, he is a nightmare. And then we are joined by not an insect alien, not a humanoid alien, a weird looking bear alien who is our tracker, our sniffer. His sniffing techniques are 10 times better than a dog. Holy shit, he, he gets his sniffer out, especially when French is fingering. Oh, fuck. He smells all them wetnesses. Oh, shit. But he is a hell of a tracker, and he's small, and he is like a beacon. He will get in touch with you anywhere in the cosmos. Anywhere he will get in touch with you. And you'll be thinking, how? How? No one knows it's magic. Just like them lesbian space witches on that weird show, The Acolyte. No one knows it's just fucking magic. <laughs> no. No one knows because I haven't got that far writing him yet. <laughs> so yeah, no one knows. And not even I know. Oh shit. We're off to a great start. Cheers, folks. And lastly, we are joined by Captain Ryan's love interest. She brings all the boys to the yard. She doesn't mind the ogling. She has three breasts. Three perfectly carved thighs. And a butt. And a butt that won't stop. Holy moly. Captain Ryan has fallen in love. With a true one. With a real one. On fire. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Um, she's like Gamora but on every fucking drug known to mankind. That's how hot this fucking babe is. To witness, to appear on this babe's gaze is slightly like Medusa, but instead of turning to stone, you'll get, you'll have the free pronged attack happen to you. You'll vomit, you'll shit yourself, but you'll explode in your front bum you will just spunk all over the place because she's full of natural spunkiness. Holy shit. No wonder he is in love. And you wonder why? Rarity one, why? How the hell did Captain Orion gaze upon this babe's beauty? Again, I'm a lazy writer. <laughs> uh, I just haven't got there yet, folks. We will get there. We will get there. You, me, together, we will get there. I need your help, folks. I need you, and you, and you, and, and him over there. He threw a T-shirt at me yesterday. Fucking asshole. <laughs> There's no one there. There isn't no one there. Although, who knows? This house could be paranormally activated because I've done some weird shit over the past 24 hours. Most of the weird shit is watching the Acolyte, but yes, who knows? But anyway, our Motley crew. No, not the awesome rock fucking band. No, our Motley crew, Cra Captain Orion and his Dandelion Pickles. Why Dandelion Pickles? No idea. Sound pretty good at the time. If you think of a better name for our, our crew, get in touch because I need you to get in touch with me because I'm a lazy writer. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, I'm calling myself a writer. I, I'm not a writer. Fuck me. <laughs> I'm just a retard, a nerd, and someone who's got really fucking heavily dyslexic. Do I have a button? Yes. Yeah, that'll do. That button will suffice. Ooh, do I have one of these buttons? What does this do? Yes. So as we join our crew... Dandelion pickles. Now. Many, many, oh. many hours later. Yeah, sorry about that one. <laughs> Certified badass. Oh. There we go. Certified motherfucking badasses. And what is this one? So, as we join our crew, the Dandelion pickles. 
We join them as they are surfing the cosmic wave. The explosionists. These fuckers explode planets across the galaxy, across the cosmos. And it's up to you, me, and Captain Orion to stop these fuckers. Sorry. Sorry, I, <laughs> it's a... Uh... It's weird, that that voice, it's weird. It's good in a meme, but I'm trying to be serious. <laughs> so, yes, Captain Orion, he is travelling the stars. He is he is on the search for the explosionists. These fuckers explode planets. These fuckers explode planets all over the galaxy, all over the cosmos, and they don't give a fuck if that planet has trans people on it. No! We must stop these fuckers. Well, maybe we should help them. <laughs> no, that, that, that's a joke. That is a joke for all you fucking soft cunts out there. Again, I maybe should have said, if you're easily offended, fuck off. <laughs> um, yeah, so as we as we search the cosmos for the explosion, we come across a desolate planet with no life whatsoever. We... We come down, we search this planet, but there's been a divergent, or there's been a virgent, and there's life all over the place. Oh, fuck me, I'm talking about the act like fuck's sake. Anyway, um, let me know if you're interested about Captain Orion, and I will see what I can come up with. Um, if you're not, fuck it. <laughs> um, but yes, Captain Orion, he is traveling the cosmos. He is tackling... He is tackling the woke agenda, tick box after tick box, social justice messaging after social justice messaging, and he won't stop until the identity politics is fucking stopped by them shady producers, them shadowy directors, and them Harvey and them Harvey Weinstein fuckers. Because of a lot of them in Hollywood and in TV land, not in anime, I hope. Um, and he is on the verge of kicking motherfucking asses all over. He's got Disney to their knees. Their politics, their woke agenda, their identity politics is all over the place. But he's, with a shaft gut plunge, they're spewing check boxes and social justice messaging all over the floor. Mickey... Mickey is running up to Daddy Disney, trying to patch him up. Ha ha ha! Fucking, that was pretty good, I think. Ha ha! I'll save you. Ha ha! <laughs> what the fuck? Nah. I think that was pretty good myself. Uh, let me know. I'll I'll save you. Ha ha! <laughs> and uh, Daddy Disney is up on one knee. It looks like he's mustering some strength. He says a word, and it time warps our brave crew into a part of the into the part of the cosmos they have yet to discover. Well, discovered it now because of there. The words he, the words he, the words Daddy Disney said was Rachel Zegler. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you like that little manifesto. It, to be fair, it wasn't a little. It wasn't a manifesto. I fucked up. <laughs> I started um, spewing out a little thing I'm working on in the background somewhere. Uh, not that background. Maybe the background of this computer we're on. Maybe, maybe not. Mm, interesting. Interesting. But yes, we are trying to. You and me are trying to take back our entertainment, trying to take it back. Our favourite IPs, our favourite stories, our favourite villains. We are trying to take it back because they have been overrun by identity politics, by woke agendas, social justice messaging and tick box after tick box after tick box. We are trying to take them back. Will we ever take them back? I do believe we are on the verge of a major victory. Selfish reason, I hope this victory is put off for a year or two 
selfish, I know, but I'm trying to carve out this little. I'm trying to carve out this little part of the corner of this internet to make my own. Although, if no one joins me in this part of the internet, I'll still continue. If no one watches, I will still continue. All listens, I will still continue because I love doing this. I love doing this, both my podcasts and my little YouTube channel. I fucking love it. Um, but anyway, enough of that. Let's go down to the garden. This is going to be a very quick one. This is going to be a short one. This is going to be off the cuff. We're doing it live. We're going in hot. We're going in hot, baby. And we're going to see what we can fuck up. So as we head down to the garden, the pop culture, me, Big R, Chris T and Tyler, we're all heading down to the garden and pop culture. And as we arrive at the garden of pop culture we can hear harvey weinstein it sounds like he's actually joined by a familiar a familiar face a familiar voice he yes he's joined by his former close personal assistant but they are not joined because they are fist uh, sisting scissoring or fisting or fingering no she has a quandary for a for her former close personal assistant, and he can't quite hear what they're saying. But she's she's asking, people don't like my show. <laughs> what can I do? And he's like, just finger the actresses. He <laughs> probably say that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, and now she's buggered off, and he's he's at, he's guarding the gates, even though the gates are heavily fortified, but. He is another level of security. We just want glimpses of our favourite IPs, glimpses of our favourite characters, our favourite stories. And yet we've got gates, we've got walls in our way. We can't get at them and they can't get at us. You know, they often, the producers and the directors and the writers often call us the gatekeepers, but they are the ones that are gatekeeping. They are the ones that are gatekeeping us from our favourite franchises. They are that the only thing they are interested in is destroying. They want to destroy our favourite IPs and make it into their own. They they want the James Bond. But they want to destroy Bond and put a female Bond in its place, or maybe a black Bond in its place. And they will do it so it will fuck. It will piss, it will shit all over 007, James Bond himself. They will do anything to shit on what came before them. Are you thinking, well, never doubt. No, yes, they do. Look at Disney Star Wars, for example. Look at Lord, uh, Lord of the Rings. Look at Rings of Power, for example. You tell me they're not shitting on our beloved franchises. They are. They are shitting on our beloved franchises. Look at Doctor Who, for fuck's sake. Holy shit. No one's watching that shit anymore. No one. No one's watching Doctor Who anymore. No one. And there's my proof. There's our argument. Whole load of us arguing. No one's watching this shit. But they continue to do it because they are the gatekeepers. But as we look into the garden, we we always look to our fateful Lord of the Rings garden within the garden. (laughs) Stupid, I know. Not Lord of the Rings, I mean my garden within a garden. (laughs) I'm a retard. Um, We look over and we see it's been guarded by Gandalf the White and some motherfucking Peter Jackson. Holy shit. They look like they have battle damage on. The gates look they have battle damage on, but the garden within the garden looks pristine, look a happy motherfucking place. For I can see, I can sort of see Frodo and Samwise Ganji skipping in the background. Aragorn teaching Pip looks like a happy fucking place. But as we notice the garden, we can see the Rings of Power crew scuttling off into their little crack den cave they're cracked in cave they are they've tried a yet again a failed attempt on the lord of the rings gardens their their show is getting close if they're grabbing anything they're trying so desperately to get in that garden so they can pinch from the lord of the rings 
but they failed yet again. Thankfully. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. I can't believe what I've just seen. A curly haired motherfucker from Wales has tackled a xenomorph. Tackled a xenomorph. Holy shit. It's on the floor. I can't believe he's just tackled one. He's tackled an alien. Holy fuck. Oh shit. Yeah, it's getting a remake, isn't it? Fuck. Damn. Damn. He's, he's, stood a, he's stood upon the xenomorph. He's shouting at it. I probably butchered the fucking name. I know I have. Um, he's shouting at it and he's saying it's your fault. It's your fault. Tough. Tough. Oh, holy shit. A disabled woman is coming up trying to save the xenomorph. Holy shit. What the fucking hell's going on? The 15th Doctor has tackled the disabled woman out of a wheelchair. He's stood upon her and shouted, Tough. You've got to hear my chocolateness. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. No one's safe in the garden, folks. No one's safe in the garden. And as we look away, as we look away from the 15th Doctor Shooty, and Russell Dicker Davis scissoring and fingering each other. Oh, we look at little happy Marty McFly skipping. He's a happy little chap. Oh, you best not fuck with Marty McFly, you fucking assholes. He's skipping. It looks like he's off to the Back to Future Garden. He looks like he might get there safely. It does look like Kathleen Kennedy is stalking him, though. Oh, fuck, sad. Didn't she? I didn't realise she had a thing to do with it. Oh, fuck's sake don't you dare touch marty mcfly don't you fucking dare you bitch oh fuck me i look oh, fuck marty you stop skipping in the garden Marty. get into your fucking garden get into the back to future garden it looks like kathleen kelly joined by bob the weatherman i go fuck sake oh i don't even think they own the rights to the back to the future but they'll do anything to fuck that one up they will turn Marty McFly into Marsha McFly. Doc Brown will be... <laughs> Doc, Doc Brown will be Professor Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> oh, and it won't be... And it won't be that classic 80s music that we all know and love with the Back to the Future. No. And it won't be Huey Lewis and the news back in time. No, no, it'll be, it'll be Tay Tay and shake it off. Oh, fuck me. No, I'm giving my ideas. Shit. Oh, fucking hell. No, don't you fucking dare. And George McFly will be Georgina McFly. And he's, and his other mum will be his other mum. Because he'd be raised. Oh, I say he, Marsha will be raised by two lesbians. And Marsha's girlfriend will still be a girlfriend, but she'll be the fat butch one. Fuck. Damn. Shit. The only character that will stay the same is Biff Tannen. Well, I say stay the same. He'll be maybe, maybe portrayed as a Donald Trump looking figure, even though he was sort of. But it'll be even more orange. <sighs> Don't you dare fuck with Back to the Future, you fucking assholes. But anyway, so anyway, me, Big R, Chris T, Tyler, we're we're heading from the garden. We're gonna drown our sorrows. We're gonna we're gonna think about some comic books that we know and love. We're gonna talk about some films we know and love. We're gonna talk about some indie projects. <laughs> That we're excited for epic verse motherfuckers and we're just gonna drown our sorrows in the pub maybe come on sunday come on england anyway i hope you like that little episode at the garden again now if you think you can do better than me you probably can so please get in contact with me let me know your thoughts let me know your thoughts if you just want to add to the garden you don't have to write an episode you just if you want to add just think oh i Maybe can we do something with Jaws? And I'll see what I can come up with for you fine motherfuckers at home. On the go. 
or if you are listening to me in a live automobile, honk that horn. <laughs> I, I, I hope I hope you do. But anyway, we're going to get on with tonight's show. I'm going to put myself in a corner and I will see you guys in a second. So we're going to start off at Rotten Tomatoes and we are starting off at season one, Star Wars The Acolyte. I really don't think it's going to see a season two. Holy shit, it's not going to see a season two. Uh, 81%, 14% audience score, 81% critic score, or should we say shield score? SS for shield score and SS for something else because that's what they have. Audience score, 40%. Now, Rotten Tomatoes tried something. I say air, air quotes, tried something. I believe they tried... Um, cause there was a massive glitch. I've not really looked into it, but they had a massive glitch where some of the audience scores were gone, completely gone. Um, a lot of it were Disney star Wars, but it was other shows and films. Um, but I do believe because we're country all getting rid of the audience score or reviews or comments, I believe this is where the whole thing will go. We can't have you common folk coming in on our beloved material. No, no, oh no, no. Especially if we've got an agenda to it and you guys are belittling our agenda. Let's have a quick look. So we've got a four star. I wasn't sure at first, but the more the story progressed, the more I'm invested. Great series. What the fuck are you watching? How high are you? So, yeah, that sounds to me like a re positive review bomb. So, yeah, um, they're trying to say that it's been fucking review bombed heavily. Well, I haven't seen one yet. I haven't seen one yet. Where's all the bad reviews? Um, The story is such a great way to introduce a new perspective the Jedi and their impact on the world. That sounds very stinky. It's fishy. That. That's fucking fishy. Actually appreciate Acolyte for what? Oh, actually, actually appreciate Avalite um, for what it is, regardless of common online hate. So that is a positively review bomb. Why would you put that in your review? Um, regardless of the common online hate. How about the online criticism? Acolyte and Andor are easily the best Star Wars TV shows. I don't get the review bombing. Well, okay. I don't get the positive review bombing. Because what I've watched, this show is absolute dog shit. That's not hate. That's my honest opinion. Keep it up. Keep up like this, Disney. Way to make good after the absolute failure of Ashoka, Book of Bobo Fett and Obi-Wan. Oh, well. <sighs> yeah. All of them are positively review bombings. Enough is enough. No Star Wars show is perfect. Even Star Wars under George Lucas had its flaws, and this show is not that bad. But you give it a five. You give it a five stars, but you're you're already you're saying that the show isn't perfect. But you've given a perfect score. Are you fucking real, you fucking prick? What the fuck? No one said George Lucas wasn't perfect. Or was perfect. Or there wasn't any flaws in his Star Wars. No. No one has ever, ever said that. Nerds and fans alike have arguments on these very flaws. Arguments. But this is a long way from George Lucas. A long way. And saying that you fucking... Saying... <sighs> 
a lot of positively review bomb. I've not come across one review bomb. We've got a one star, so this would be a review bomb. A decent concept somewhere. I don't know why I say anything about that in that voice, but this is a pub, this is a review bomb. A decent concept somewhere in here and some good moments, but too few and too poorly raised. Uh, realized uh, realized right fuck me my dyslexia is shit realized yeah realized to rely say anything really new interesting or compelling rotten show for rotten company yeah <laughs> from a rotten company ah yeah see here we go here we go so okay let's have a look at one of these the worst star wars ever I'm a huge Star Wars fan and watch everything there is Star Wars. My wife will sit and watch with me all the time. This is the first show she won't continue. She was bored with the story as, as are most of us. The acting is so bad. I don't care for any character except for Qu uh, Quimmy. Uh, Smile Rent, he is the only hope for the show. Yes, him, and I did used to say Master Soul. <sighs> Not the way they're writing his character, but yeah, that really doesn't sound like it's been review bombing. That sounds to me like an honest opinion of a awful show. Um, but. Let's go back to, let's go back to it. So yes, Star Wars um, is being review bombed. So yeah, I believe Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, all of them will get rid of these scores. And you'll only have the approved scores approved by the company that has created said project. Um, but we'll go to the episodes. So Let's have a look at the episodes, if you'll let me go there. So, Lost and Found, episode one. No idea. 92. 92%. Episode two. 92. Oh, 92. 92. Episode three. 92. Oh, 88. I reckon episode four will get a 77. Damn. Damn. Three off. 80. Okay. Episode five. The Long Night. 88, it's gone up by 8, holy shit. Episode 6, 87. Now, episode 7, yes, it's only been out a day, day and a half. Oh, 50%, 50%. You've dropped from 88 to 50%, and yes, you'd be like, oh, it's only been out a day and a half. 15 reviews, okay? 15 reviews, 87 um, for number six. Episode seven, 14 reviews, 50%. The shills have had enough. Their souls can't be brought anymore for money or the money of the show has run out. Fucking hell. That's where all the money's gone. That's where all the money is gone. Oh, 180 million this show cost. 100 million of it went to the shills. <laughs> we found it. Stop the presses. We found where the money's gone. It's gone to the shills. Uh, see, episode seven was fucking stupid. If you've seen episode, I, I call it episode seven. Really, we should call it episode three, part seven. Or episode three, or 7.3 or 3.7 or some, some some bullshit like that. But anyway, if you've seen episode three, you don't need to see episode seven. You get about five, ten minutes if you're if I'm being um generous, ten minutes of new material. I say new, new new material from a different perspective. How on earth Master Tomlin killed killed himself, killed himself. For what? I have no fucking idea. And how the fuck? How the fuck was he a master? How the fuck was he a master? Because when he got back, 
He went straight to fucking, um, well, it's made out in the show, to me anyway, it's made out in the show that he went straight to fucking isolation. So how the fuck was he a master? Um, master Soul, uh, maybe Carrie and Moss had a, a point of maybe them killing themselves. He let a fucking child die, or he thought he'd left, let a child die, and she, you know, lied through her back teeth and, you know, said, don't do what you're going to do, you fucking scumbags. But Master Tomlin, or Pedowan Tomlin, the only white actor in that episode, was... He killed himself for what? A bad decision? A, a bad decision? Like I said, Master Saul had more... Had more if he was... You'd maybe understand it if he was going to kill himself. You'd maybe understand it. Master Tony, he got fucking mind raped. I mean, mind fucked. I mean, I mean his mind was taken over by one of her lesbian witches. Oh. And... Amanda um, um, Steinberg wasn't even in this episode. So that was a plus. That was a plus. <laughs> um, and stone and metal going up, explosions, fire going up in this um, stone building, stone and metal building with some electrics. Um, I think someone has said I was listening to someone today and they was like, well, they've they've come out and said that the, the stone is flammable. Okay. Okay, that's not how stone works. It will burn. It will burn, but not how it, it burnt like that. And I say it will burn, it'll oh, fuck me. It's fucking it, this made this show's made me fucking nuts. But the only thing I can think of that makes any sense to me, right? So this planet, this dead planet, apparently with no life on whatsoever, full of life. Um, this planet that a hundred years earlier was involved in a massive hyperspace event, explosion, something, something happened making every making all the life um gone so it had had no life whatsoever in this massive ma hyperspace uh, quandary mm, not sure um but yeah it's teeming full of life um this very obviously looking mountain base say mountain base it looks like a fucking dam Damn, it looks like a fucking dam. It does, it looks like a fucking dam. Massive, absolute fucking massive. I'm pretty sure the Jedi have special equipment on their ships to map a planet so it could see structures. I'm pretty sure. Or droids, at least. Um, droids that maybe can... Oh, there's life on this planet. Or maybe... Use the force because these are witches that dabble in the force. So maybe force using Jedi's could maybe sense this force on this planet. Hmm, interesting. But yeah, we find out that they've been on this planet seven weeks. Seven weeks doing what? Surveying? They have a metal detector. I shit you not, they have a metal detector. They're surveying the planet for life, for the force, for the virgin. That's what they're there for. Although they didn't clue one of their members, a four-member crew, they didn't clue one of him, they didn't clue him up to why they're on this planet in the first place. No, it's just always oh, weird that this planet shouldn't have life on, but it's full of life. Hmm. Not intelligent life. No, no way. No intelligent life was on that planet. But we find out there is intelligent life when we see the twins or soul sees the twins. Um, but anyway, I, I've got off topic. I've fucking, I've 
gone down on a pathway I didn't really want to go down. Um, but the so I was getting at why on earth this place went up so easily because there's 50 lesbian witches, I mean bitches, oh fuck, done it again, switches, witches, bitches, these lesbian witches, scissoring, they're all in partnerships, and scissoring, I imagine it's very dry, very, very rubbery, very dry, unless you've got a unicorn and it spits all over the place, uh, so I don't know, it might not get dry, I have no idea, but the only f the only thing I can assume these lesbian witches have done, they have created this lubrication, this lube for themselves. For pleasure, it has a two purpose. For pleasure and for helping moisturising the other parts of the commune. Two purpose lube. Moisturising and lube for fun times. But when one lesbian made a batch of lube, because the lesbians and the witches and the bitches, they don't necessarily have the writings of, they don't have the ingredients, that the ingredients are just spoken. And this one lesbian, which I, I imagine it's the man lesbian, which um, created a batch of lube. And he added another ingredient. Uh oh, shit. He added a, 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 another ingredient, which meant this lubrication, what had two purposes, has now have three purposes. Lubrication for fun times, moisturizing for delicate parts, and kerosene, baby, for fire. Because obviously the witches don't really do much with fire pits and that. This kerosene based lubricant. Because the lesbian scissoring all over the place, they squirt, they do everything all over the place. It's gone all over the walls, everywhere, all over the walls. It's, they have fun in the corridors, they have fun. They have communal fun. They spurt all over the, because most of them are unicorns. They spurt all over the place and it's got everywhere. And because it's stone, it's porous, it's got into the stone. It's got into the stone somehow, this this lubricant, this lube that has three purposes now. But the bitches, I mean the witches, still only think it's got two purposes. Not realising it has got a third purpose. And that purpose is kerosene. No. That's the only reason, that's the only logical reason I could think this base had gone up. In flames. And it exploded, folks. I've got it. I've got it, folks. That's it. That lubricant with two purposes. Someone fucked up and made a lubricant. Yes, this lubricant worked. They were all fucking orgasming all over the places. Everywhere. They were unicorning all over the places, spitting here, there, everywhere. I bet some of them even got it on their faces. In shock. Ooh. <laughs> That's a good time. That's a good time. Don't yeah, don't let it fool you. It's a good fucking time. Um off topic. Yeah, sorry. Let me get back on. Um and they're spitting all over the places. And you know, that's the only thing I can think why this base went up so quick. That lubrication they made, that a two purpose lubricant, which actually made a mistake and now it's a free um purpose lubricant. And one of them being kerosene. Shit. It's always this disaster was always gonna happen. It's all because of a Jedi tried taking them children down. I mean trying to take them children. Which Master Sol had a connection with Osha. That was very weird. Very, very weird. He met this girl once, twice in a day, but he has a connection with her. Weird. I suppose Leslie Hedlin, write, write what you know. So I could say, and yeah, Master Tomlin, poor Master Tomlin got f raped. I mean, um, fucked, mind fucked. Uh, I'm not going to give it a real <laughs> positive review, but I mean, um, yeah, Master Tomlin, uh, Padawan Tomlin got mind fucked. 
And this is the, um, this is, this is a main problem. We've got one, two, three, four, five, five executive producers. How many directors? We've got right, right, uh, right. Fucking, how many writers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten writers. What the f how the how the hell can these fuckers sleep at night? The thing you have writ is dog shit. Dog shit. Shit. And damn, she looks she looks like she'd you know damn. Um, but I still believe he's a good actor. His character in this has got fucking so retarded. Um, but Manny Jacinto, I hope this doesn't fuck up his career. And maybe Daphne Kane as well, Keen, and uh, uh, Lee Jung Jae. Hope they don't ruin their careers with this show. Um, I hope it doesn't ruin their careers. And then two young actresses. I will never blame the two young actresses. Never. Um, but anyway, let's um, nip off to the Nielsen. Um, so, so do you think this show would appear in the top tens? So, June 3rd to June 9th. Um, no. <laughs> original content. Oh, it's original. It's a Disney plus original. Seventh. Ah, seventh. Ah, oh, well done. The Acolyte, episode seven, or number seven. Um, and it's only done two episodes. Ah, well done. Ah, oh, so yeah, this show is utter dog shit, and that's an insult to dog shit. Um, and people are saying, oh, it's because you don't like female-led fucking action films or, or series. Well, House of the Dragon perfection perfection and it's led by a female actress and a transgender actor and i couldn't love this show any more than what i fucking do even though it's following off um game of thrones season seven and eight but this show is superb and you can see audience and chills alike like it 87 audience 90 percent Critics, sh uh, shills, I mean. Let's have a look. All critics, or top critics, 77. All audience, 87. Yeah, this show is fantastic. Fantastic. Episode 4. <sighs> Fuck me. Brilliant. Dance of Dragons. No, it's not called Dance of Dragons. It was, um, what was it called? Oh, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's... Um, Oh, the Red Dragon and the Gold. Um, fantastic episode. Fantastic episode. But the the previous episodes were just, were just building up to this episode and building up for other episodes. This great writing, great acting, great storytelling, great direction. This show is fantastic. Absolute fantastic. Season two... Even better. Fucking even better. 90 90. Shit. Whew. Again, fantastic. I'm not a huge fucking Matt Smith fan. I know he's a fantastic actor. Don't get me wrong. I know he's a fucking fantastic actor. And I can I've always seen he's been a fantastic actor. Take my feelings aside, he's a fantastic actor. I just don't he rubs me up the wrong way. I don't know why. I, I just don't know why. Um, maybe he made... I, I, I don't know why. He's probably a fucking sweetheart as well. That's the thing. That, that's what annoys me the most. He's probably a fucking sweetheart. But he's a hell of an actor. And Emma Darcy, fantastic actress. Actor. Sorry, I do apologise. Um, who's the other actress in it? Um... Who's it? Um, Olivia Cook. Fantastic. Absolute fantastic. Um, 
all these actors and actresses in this show are just top. They're hitting, they're hitting their peak of acting. They are hitting the peak. Matt Smith hitting his peak. Emma Darcy hitting their peak. Reefs hitting his peak. They're all hitting their peak. Steven is hitting his peak. Fucking fant. I want to see more of this geezer. He, Sir Christian Cole, uh, Fabian uh, Frankel, I probably butchered that. He's playing it so well. People are actually going to his personal Instagram page and fucking slating him. <laughs> slating him. But I suppose. Joffrey had it, whoever, the guy who played Joffrey, he had it, fucking hated him, I know he's an actor, um, but that's how well this geezer is playing Sir Christian Cole, that's how well he is playing him, um, I can't put a thing, I would say they could maybe improve on, the dialogue in, in this is phenomenal, the acting in this is A++. The direction is something else, and I believe it's done by, maybe not directed, but Chappelle Saposnik is is one of the creators in this um, crew. Well, it's got a crew. Um, Chappelle, um, where is he? I'm pretty sure he had something to do with it. Yeah, uh, Miguel Saposnik, executive producer. I'm pretty sure he's got a little bit more um, to do with it as well, but fucking hell, what a fantastic, fantastic series so far. And I just want more. I fucking want more. And I haven't done this in a long time. And I haven't done this in a long time, where I think the last time I did it was with... Game of Thrones, maybe, maybe actually, um, oh, what's that Netflix show, Stranger Things. I love it that much that I found myself looking up YouTube videos, podcasts about it, see if I can just get any, any, some more, see if I could sponge some more fucking knowledge of this. I say Leslie Headlin, fucking take note, but the acolytes are already made. And I couldn't care less. <laughs> But House of the Dragon, Maylee's Sunfire and Vega Explained. Ah, so I'm not going to get into much of it. This, the episode, episode four, I would give it, I would give it a nine. I would give it a nine. That's how good it was. The, the, dra the dragons fighting. So, yes. Um, Eamon, fucking love that character. He is... He is the younger Damon, uh, Matt Smith's character. Um, Prince Amond. Oh, what a character. What a fucking superb character. Depth. Complex. Mystery. Cunning. Is, is the younger version of Matt Smith's character, Prince Damon. Fucking superb. And I can't wait to see what they do. Really can't. Just seeing, just watching the Battle of the Dragons and just watching the, the soldiers beneath them fighting, trying to um, navigate the battlefield while there is live fucking dragons firing, fucking collapsing, fucking dropping shit on them. And tr seeing these soldiers run like trying to navigate the battlefield trying not to get crushed to see that it is just oh and when one of the dragons i can't remember which one it was fell and it knocked a lot of the soldiers out it knocked sir christian cole out and the way he knocked him out he was knocked out cold and then when he got up there has been a massive explosion or fire something and and the way he got up, he was winded. And the way he portrayed being winded and out of breath was... Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. Oh, fucking hell. Kingmaker. 
We've got a young Cersei in the making with Alicent Hightower. And Emma sh uh, foreshadowing fucking you you could see where Daenerys gets her gets her qualities from. She's patient, she's thoughtful, she is a grieving mother. But yet she has anger. She has determination. She knows. She wants to do it the peaceful way. But she knows it's not going to happen. Stephen, Lord Corliss. Oh. In, I wasn't keen, keen on her character in the show, Prince Rainier. Um, Princess Rainier. Um, I wasn't keen on her character. That's how well she fucking played it. That's how well she played it. She played it um, not to be a likable character. She played it to be a fucking, you, you know you don't like this character. She could have ended the war, but she didn't want to kill the mother. But she was killed with finding the, killing all the small folk. Um, but them two, fantastic, fantastic. And uh, this show is fucking awesome. Awesome, absolute awesome. Highly recommend it. And I, I say that I'm probably I'm probably not recommending it to anyone because if you're watching this, you're probably watching House of Dragon. That's how good it is. And only brought that up to remind me about the 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 dragon fight. It was fucking awesome. And the amount of news of what's coming out, you know, people just loving this show is absolutely fucking superb. Highly recommend it. The dragon fight. And for what I, for the people I follow who know the, who know the book material, who know the material from the book, it's going to get worse. <laughs> um, for them, it's going to get a hell of a lot better for us. And I can't wait. Now, when season seven and eight of Game of Thrones was on, I used to, used to book the Mondays off, just so I could watch it when it premiered throughout the world. Um, so two o'clock here in England, because um, it obviously America is where it premiered, and if you want to watch it, you you've got to stick to the American times. But Sky had it, and they had it on at two o'clock in the morning, and I made sure I booked off on Mondays to watch it. That's how much I'd love Game of Thrones, even though 7 and 8 fucking destroyed a lot of people's feelings of that show. This, it makes me want to book off Mondays again. But it's only, we've only got four more episodes, so I probably won't. This show is, I 100% recommend this show. What you got to lose? What have you got to lose? If you haven't watched it, what have you got to lose? Watch Four episodes of season one. What have you got to lose? Four hours? What, what were you going to watch? Were you going to watch maybe some other Disney shit? Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Um, yes, if you... I believe you could maybe um, have a free Now TV. I think we it'd be over here. Now TV uh, trial make a a other another email address um chef's kiss of a show now i'm just going to quickly touch on this gladiator 2 official trailer i thought the trailer looked all right but i'm i'm a i'm i'm with jeremy from geeks and gamers with this one when the hip hop music hit that was it. I was taken out. I was taken out of it. We're not going to watch the trailer. Um, it's three odd minutes long, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people have seen it. Um, Paramount Pictures. But it's been ratioed, and I have no idea why. So Denzel is basically portrayed by Denzel as a ancient Roman. <laughs> I like that, that comment. We only have one black guy in the movie, boss. Blast a rap song over the trailer then. <laughs> I like that. Fucking hell. <laughs> um, 
The only thing what lets me down with this is Pedro Pascal. I'm, I don't like the actor. Don't like him. Bit of a prick. Good actor. He is a good actor, but he is a prick. It does look good. It does look good. Um, fucking Denzel. Quite possibly the greatest actor alive. I would only maybe say Morgan Freeman, Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, maybe. Denzel Washington, probably one of my favourite actors ever. Fucking love him in whatever he's played. Bad guy, love him. Good guy, love him. Complicated guy, love him. Fucking love him. He's fantastic, Denzel. And he does what act, any good actor should do. I'm not saying that all actors should do it. I'm, you know, actors do what you want, but he keeps his nose out of politics. I can remember there was a interview where someone, a interviewer, fucking shield journalist, asked him, "Who are you voting for?" He's like, "I'm not playing that game. No, fuck you." Um, fantastic actor. Even if he'd come out and he'd be like, oh, uh, "I hate Trump," he'd still be a fantastic actor. Still, but he's playing Denzel. It looks that look. I've seen. We've all seen that look before. Training day. That takes me. That look takes me back to training day. I see, boy. <laughs> what a film. Oh shit. What a film. But I don't. I don't get it. Um. I know. I'm real. I've been House of a Dragon shit. So I'm maybe missing. I. There, this is obviously a cash grab by Paramount, a cash grab. Be interested to see what they do, but do we really need a Gladiator 2? I don't think we do. I don't think we do. Uh, this guy lets it down for me. Don't really know. Um, Paul Mescal. Is it Mescal or Mascal? Um, Denzel Washington, fucking phenomenal actor. But I didn't want it to touch on that. I only wanted to touch on it because I just don't understand. It looks pretty much a carbon copy of what came before. Um, Denzel looks like he's playing the um, oh, what's the um, the actor? It looks like he's playing an Oliver Reed type of character, Denzel Washington. Again, cut the hip hop out, and I'd it probably look all right. The bit with the rhino, maybe, is that what everyone's pissed off at? The rhino sequence? The bit with the rhino, maybe? I don't know what I've just done there. Is it a bit with the rhino? Is that what everyone's pissed off? Because that's a bit silly. Interesting to see what they do with it. But, um, yeah. Now, I'm going to watch it. And I, I'm looking, I'm slightly looking forward to it. Just because of Denzel. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just don't understand this. I'm going to have to maybe look into it a little bit more, see why it's got a ratio. No idea why. But I am right into an anime binge. And no, I haven't seen Kaiju number eight, Kaiju number eight. This, I wanted to see this, Kaiju number eight, um, where to watch it at home. Fandango at home. No idea. Apple TV. Oh. Yeah, I think I get three months free. I might sign up to Apple TV. I am hearing nothing but good things when it comes to Kaiju number eight. I'm just, like I said, I'm just hearing nothing but good things with this, with this anime. Um, big monster. Big monster Kaiju, obviously. Um, some awesome day pop. Thank you, see you, Go. I mean, it's just like it's uh, new reading is a little shocking. But it looks interesting. What I, I hear is... 
It's a fantastic manga. And. So, yeah, I'm going to get some of the other one. I'm going to get some of the it does look, I'm going to have to sign up to Apple TV. It looks fantastic. If you're out there and you you know of Kaiju number eight and you're like, oh, don't waste your time, or you're like, oh, no, waste your time, let me know. If it's worth a watch, if it's it's get a 79% audience score, so... But like I say, I've, I've been hearing all over the place that Kaiju number eight is hell of a watch, hell of a watch, action, sci-fi, anime... And I am looking forward to watching it. In a minute, I'm still watching Seven Deadly Sins, and I'm fucking loving that in a minute. But I'm just trying to venture out into the world of anime, manga, um, and seeing what there is. Because there's a lot that looks like it's going to be interesting, but then I watch it, and it's like, oh, wait, was it? Um, I still don't get why people, you know, fall in love with like, the characters and the... That porn thing, one anime itself, I'm fucking, I'm loving anime at the minute. Loving it. So, yeah, I, and what I've heard, it's some of the kaijus in this are awesome. Some of the action in this is awesome. The story tone is fantastic. Um, so I can't wait to watch it and review it to you guys. I really can't. Um, so if you've seen it or if you... Or if you're a little bit like me, um, let me know and we can maybe watch it together. Or let me know if it's shit or good. Um, but I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to watching this. Uh, so let me um, let me know. Um, but anyway, we're gonna. I've done quite a few things that I've enjoyed tonight. Uh, House of a Dragon, Kaiju Number Eight, Gladiator, and Acolyte. Well, I didn't like Acolyte. We are going to go to Tear Maker once again, folks. So cue that game music. This, I've noticed myself, I've been doing quite long um, Tear Makers. So I haven't really been, I've just been dragging and dropping shit into, into a uh, good, uh, yes, yes, queen. Or, uh, it's, it's acolyte, it's shit. Um, so I, I thought I'd pick a smallish, a smaller one and I might continue this trend for a couple of shows at least but quentin tarantino films tier list maker that's where we are we've got s we've got s tier baby we've got a tier we've got b we've got c we've got d we've got e and we've got f and we've got question mark question mark is i haven't seen it okay obviously there's not many quentin tarantino directed films um it looks like it's got them all there. So we're going to start off. Where's our dogs? Tarantino's first. And quite possibly one of the greatest. I'll say that. Pulp Fiction. Fucking S tier, baby. Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. What a story. I'd. I know Wes Our Dogs was his first and I don't I can't think if Pulp Fiction was his second or was it his third but this has to be one of the greatest Tino films ever um, the, the way he told the story it it's, it was revolutionary it was just fantastic seeing um, Samuel L. Jackson how many people remember his line about the cheeseburger? How many are oh, seeing Tim Roth being a crazy motherfucker or oh, Uma Thurman getting fucking pumped full of fucking adrenaline to save her life? Doing the, the dance, the iconic dance to the teenage fucking song. I can't remember the name of the song. John Travolta quite possibly saved his career with this film fucking Zed in that story arc holy shit <sighs> holy shit ah oh, Reservoir Dogs was great especially when you had that uncut fucking um, torture scene that uncut where he's playing the um, I can't think of the song the uh, the jazz song 
but he's playing it he's he cutting at a guy but he walks out to get something else to run back in and the music is perfectly on time some great Jackie Brown I'm putting that at B I enjoyed it but I enjoyed it never to return to watch it again it's one one of his films that oh, I don't really want to I've seen it once and I don't have to see it again sort of film I just didn't at the time I just didn't like seeing De Niro the way being portrayed the way he was being portrayed um, thinking about it now yeah um, it was a good film but would I go back again and watch it no no Kill Bill these two well, I'm actually going to put Kill Bill 2 in in A. Kill Bill and Kill Bill, the original Kill Bill Volume 1, fantastic. Kill Bill Volume 2, it was a great watch. I saw Kill Bill um, Volume 1 loads of times. I saw Kill Bill Volume 2 a couple of times. That quite possibly had better single combat. But that with the crazy 88 scene phenomenal phenomenal and Uma Thurman on her A game pussy wagon shit her concentrating on her big toe her big weird toe he has a weird foot thing now death proof <laughs> it goes it really belongs in B, but Kirk Russell is a a a game in this film. Kirk Russell a game again with a weird foot thing. Um, a this it was a great film. I've only watched it a couple of times. It was very strange, weird for a Tarantino. Now, Indulgious Bastards. I haven't seen I haven't seen Dango Unchained Django Unchained It's a tough one It's a tough one I will put it in S tier I enjoyed it, it's just far too fucking long <laughs> Far too long but De, uh, De Niro um, Leonardo DiCaprio stole that fucking show Then you've got the German actor Waltz and uh, Jamie Fox they were all on their fucking they were all peak they were all hitting the peaks with that film Hateful Eight I've never seen the Hateful Eight again with the wrong time when it came out I just wasn't interested in watching a fucking three and a half hour film now if it come out now I'd probably watch it but I'm going to have to watch these two. I will have to watch these two. Because uh, I hear this is a fantastic film. Um, it come out when I was... I'm really into war films. Um, I've only just started getting back into them again. But it, it came out at a time when I was like... I want interest in seeing you know, World War II films. Same with maybe quite possibly with A Hateful Eight. I really want seeing, um, interest in seeing Western films. Um, movies but um, getting into fucking Yellowstone I'm right back into westerns now um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood brilliant again all the actors at, at their peak peak performances there's not, there's not an actor in this film that lets lets themselves down it's fantastic you know the storytelling of a uh, on his way down actor in Hollywood trying to make it in the new and improved Hollywood um, a old western cowboy filmmaker trying to make it in the modern world of detectives and cops it and then just on top of it you had the Tate murders 
and no it, it wasn't faithful to the Tate murders but fucking hell the Charlie Manson gang fantastic it's some iconic scenes in, in, in this film alone all of these films had some iconic scenes you've got the Z scene with the uh, with the gimp and the in the basement fucking bondage uh, session at Westerwire Dogs you had the the uncut fucking torture scene Kill Bill you had Pussy Wagon you had the crazy 88 oh you had <laughs> Dango Unchained you had um oh, Leonardo DiCaprio just talking about uh, some horrible things unforgettable kill bill 2 i'd be like whoa uh, uh, breaking through the coffin um this one the only one that i can uh, but it had the crash scene and the way he would take his victims take him for a ride in his death mission oh, fucking hell um jackie brown I've only seen it once, so I can't quite think of the iconic scene in that. But this had loads of iconic scenes. You had um, Brad Pitt's character beating up that hippie because he's fucking um, punched his tyre. You had Al Pacino in this film. You had Al fucking Pacino in this film. But you had Leonardo DiCaprio's fucking burning hippies in a pool. You had the scene right at the end just before that scene where he's burning hippies in the pool where Rex Brad Pitt's character is tripping balls and is the Manson family it's not the Manson family but his family have come to kill Hollywood stars and he's tripping balls he's like I know you <laughs> and he gets his dog he's like and can't whistle and oh iconic scene and he chucks a fucking kind of dog food at, at a hippie and it busts her eye open his eye and she's screaming and it's like holy shit he gets stabbed in the fucking leg or arm or something and it's like, oh my god this this film is film is fantastic fantastic holy shit it's fucking fantastic yeah that i'm gonna sort my s tier out um, I probably made it obviously which is my top S tier Pulp Fiction oh I'll do it that way and then yeah um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood Where's Our Dogs and then I would uh, no yeah it's Pulp Fiction top toppy tip tip top Once Upon a Time in Hollywood Holly, Holly dog, Hollywood Where's Our Dogs free Number four, Dan uh, Django Unchained. Number five, all the way, all the way back at five, Kill Bill Volume One. And then the A tier, Kill Bill Volume Two, Death Proof. And then B tier, Jackie Brown. And then nothing hits C, nothing hits D, and nothing hits E or F. But we have a couple: Hateful Eight and Indulgious Bastards. In in good. Indulge your old bastards. Oh, I can't quite think of how, how to say that word. But that's my tier list. That is my tier list. And as we do, we save it. We download it. And we send it off to Twitter. Have I downloaded it? I have now. So let's go to see if we can trigger anyone on Twitter. Probably not. Um, let me put my image. I don't name my images. You know this. You know this about me. I don't name my images. Because I'm a retard. And I'm one of them fuckers who like to piss myself off at a certain point. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, there we go. I think I might be getting Twitter, RIP. Um, the this, this Psycho Woman, um, RIP. I can't fucking remember her name. Shelley Duvall. R.I.P. Great film. Great film. Um, all work and no play. Um, but I, I don't know if I'm making, if I know how Twitter's working. I have no idea. 
um, getting a little bit of traction. No idea how to work it. Is it something I have to be on all fucking time? I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's fucked up a minute because I have two Twitters. Um, because again, I'm a retard, and the one I should have this Twitter on my phone. Um, because then I could be on it a little bit more through the day, piss, trying to piss people off, and and getting involved in the conversation, as they say. What fucking nerd I am. Um, anyway, I'm going to put myself big screen and we're going to end tonight's show. Nice. So, I hope you've had a fucking fun time hanging out with me tonight because I've loved hanging out with you guys tonight. Absolutely loved it. Um, I need you to get in the comment section and let me know your thoughts. I need you to get in contact with me about Captain Lorraine. Is it a good idea or is it just... <laughs> I just spat all over me keyboard and mouse and shit. Shit. Well, it won't spit. It won't like a big gob. It's like just a little drop. Um, let me get in contact if you think you can do better at the garden than me. Get in contact with me if you just want to say you're a fucking knobhead. Stop it. I won't stop it. But, you know, at least you can... You're a fucking knobhead. <laughs> get in contact with me. Um, like I say, all the ways of getting in contact with me are in the show notes or the description or to the video. So please... Please get in contact with me. That would be absolute awesome. If you enjoyed the show, hit that big old like button on whatever podcast video platform you are watching on. Hit that big old like button. That would be awesome. Um, so whatever podcast provider you are listening on, hit that follow button and leave me a review. That would be fucking fantastic. If you are watching this on YouTube and the green thing, Hit that big old like button. That would be absolute bloody awesome. You guys are legends. And please think about subscribing to me. That would be fucking awesome. Awesome. All you guys are legends out there. That would be fucking awesome. If you didn't like tonight's show, I do thank you for staying till this long. I really appreciate it. And I do hope I can change your mind in the future. I really do hope I can change your mind in the future. If you really... If I really upset you with tonight's show, I don't know why you didn't leave when I gave you the opportunity to fuck off. Um, maybe you're just a fucking sadomasochist and just wanted to do your own editing watching me. But if I really upset you, why didn't you let that door hit you on the way out? Why? Why? Can I ask you that? Um, if you are upset, um, I don't know what to do. Don't know how to help you on that one. Seems like a you problem, not a me problem. And uh, maybe Melissa McCunte and Sweet Baby Inc. are on that phone. Maybe they're calling you. So go answer that call because I could not give a flying fuck. This has been Head Pop. I've been your host, Rare81, and I will see you in my next video. Peace.